Okay. So we'll start. Are you able to see that? So we'll start. We'll start. So what is the triangle according to you? What is the triangle according? So what 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 dimension does it follow? Is it a one dimensional shape, two dimensional, or a two dimensional? So it is a two dimensional shape which has how many sides? Two dimensional shape with three sides, and those three sides are they enclosed or are they open? Closed. They are closed. Okay, three sides enclosed. And what do they contain? Three vertices, three angles. And they contain three included angles. So, which add up to 180 degrees. You know all these facts, right? So, basically, when you talk about a triangle, right? See, for that matter, if you take any geometrical shape, there will be a reason why we concentrate on that particular geometrical shape, right? So here, if you see, the main reason why you are taking triangles is it is applicable in many other branches of science as well. Okay. So it, it has its own applications. I'm not getting into that. So triangles has applications in different branches of science. Okay. For which, when you talk about different sets of triangles, that is, you have if I give you two triangles in your hand, okay, and I ask you to compare them. When you do the comparison, there are two kinds of outputs that you can generate. One is, you can say that the two sets of triangles are similar or the two triangles are congruent. You have heard this word congruent, right? What's the difference between similarity and congruence? So what similarities do exist? What are the similarities that exist? I have a question. See, for example, you are sitting on a chair in this room, right? Are all these chairs congruent or, or similar? You can say? See, similar is in terms of basic English. Because you cannot say the chair is the same. But when will you say, in terms of mathematics, when will you say they are congruent? They have they have the exact dimensions. So, when I say dimensions, what do I mean? Length, breadth, height, width, all these things I'm trying to talk about, right? And also, I'm talking about the angle at which your chair is bent. See, for example, if I'm able to see, right, that chair is telling me that the base and the height are in fact with each other at an angle of 90 degrees. That's what I'm able to see. Okay? Means all other chairs are also inclined at the same angle. At the same angle, 90. Hence, you can say that the triangles are congruent. For example, had there been one chair which is inclined at 90, the horizontal and the vertical, whereas the other one is inclined at 60 degrees, then can you say they are congruent? They are neither congruent nor similar also. So, for example, if I want to call this chair as similar one, then what is the change I need to make? I need to change the dimensions in such a way that, that the ratio of the dimensions will be the same. Are you able to understand? Yes, so, for example, if the horizontal part is cut by half, then the vertical should also be cut by half. So that when you take the ratio of the horizontal versus vertical for both the chairs, it will come out to be the same. So, the same is the case applied for triangles as well. So, when you talk about triangles, you can either talk about similarity or congruency and this year we are going to concentrate only on congruency. So congruency means our job is to prove that both the triangles have the same value of each side and the same included angles. Are you able to understand what I am trying to say? So if I give you two triangles ABC and PQR and if I have to say that these two triangles are congruent then what is the necessary condition that should get satisfied? AB, if I have to say triangle ABC, so what are the symbols for congruent? Equal to 
So it's it's called as a tilt, T I L D E, the one you would have seen in computer or tile, whatever you call it. Okay. Triangle P Q R. If I say that these two triangles are congruent, then what is the condition? So my question is, A B is equal to P R, is it right? So if you look at the order, I wrote the order ABC is congruent with PQR means AB and PQ are of the same length. Similarly, BC and QR and AC and PR, AC and PR will be congruent. Okay, it will be the same. When the sides are the same, the included angles will also be the same without a doubt. Is that clear? Am I clear with this fact? Okay. Now, so when I spoke about triangles, what are the three proper? What are the six properties associated with the three sides and three angles? Never forget this. So based on this. There is a branch itself developed called as properties of triangles, which will help us to analyze the different kinds of triangles that are present. Okay, but in this chapter, we are only going to concentrate on if two triangles are given, whether they are congruent or not. So, what logic you are going to use to prove that they are congruent or not? Is it clear? So, we will get into the. We have a doubt. Shall I proceed? So you would have learned this also, right? The CPCT, very famous thing. Before hence proved, you will write CPCT everywhere. What is it? Okay. Corresponding parts of the congruent triangles. Yeah. Then the congruent parts of the corresponding triangles. Corresponding and other, the relevant sides. Corresponding parts of which two triangles? Congruent triangles. Is that right? Right. So now there are different kinds of rules that are followed to prove that triangles are congruent. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So we'll go one by one. So if I go with SAS congruence rule, so if you observe two sides and one included angle, if it is the same, then you can say that the triangles are congruent. Is that enough? But I told you triangle has six properties, right? Three sides and three angles. But we are only taking three properties, two sides and one angle. If that is equal, then others also. If that is equal, others will also be equal. That is how the construction for a triangle works. Is that right? So SAS congruency means what should you, what should happen? Two sides and one included angle between them. Yes. And one included angle. So make a note of this between them. Where is your notes, sir? Write a note. I know. Take a note. Okay. So in the competition window, they have given a point. What is it? So the medians of an equilateral triangle are are what are equal or are they different? They are equal. Okay. So means if you take if you take an equilateral triangle, I just want to add one point to it. Make a note. If you take an equilateral triangle, all the angles are. 60. All the angles are equal, right? You know what is a median? What is a median? Median is not altitude. So from a point to a line, if you draw, so from a point to a base, if you draw a line, right? So if you draw a line, and if that line is dividing the opposite side in equal ratio, that is 1 is to 1. If this side is A by 2, this part is also A by 2, means BD and DC should be A by 2 each, then this line is called as a median. 
but there is an important property with respect to an equilateral triangle for an equilateral triangle median altitude and angular bisector are the same medium or median bisector will divided into so bisect angular bisector means bisector na na so what are the prefix added to it angular means if there is a line which is dividing the angle into two equal parts it's called as so this angle will be 30 and this angle will also be 30 so here in the case of an equilateral triangle from a point if you draw a line to the opposite side that line will act as a median it will also act as a it will also act as an altitude and it will also act as an angular basis sir the median uh, always act to be a half in mind no need not necessary for scalene triangle it is slightly different Shall I proceed? Yeah. Momentum <laughs> impulse. Why is it? Why start as far as pulse? You don't even understand pulse. Do you know what? Tell me what is the difference between momentum and impulse? Momentum is like the force. इंपल्स Yeah, uh, two equal sides of a triangle itself. Uh. Triangle R, sorry, R equal. Okay. It can be an equal also if the third side is also equal. right so based on this let's try out an illustration number 1 an example so they are asking us to prove prove that triangle abd is congruent to triangle acd prove that given that gt means given that okay bd is equal to cd is equal to 5 cm okay and angle adb is equal to angle adc they have not given you the diagram it is you who has to construct it right a b c okay so what is the point d they are saying BD is equal to CD is equal to five centimeter. So where should it lie? Yes. Sir, sir, there is there is ABD sir. Triangle ABD. Ah, ABD is congruent to triangle ACD is what we need to prove. So this is five centimeter. This is five centimeter. Is that clear? Now what else is given? Angle ADB, angle ADB. If I call this as x is equal to angle ADC. This is also x. So this is five. The this is five. Okay, this side. So which two triangles will you consider? Triangle ADB and triangle. ADC is what you are going to consider. Okay, 
so ad and ad are common then db db is equal to dc is equal to 5 cm that is given similarly angle d okay angle adb is equal to angle adc that is also given so what can you say two sides and an included angle so they are congruent according to which criteria so they are congruent according to sas criteria right it's a simple one right shall i proceed Tell me. Uh, in the before one, uh, if they give an equivalent triangle and uh, the lady is there, lady is coming like this, then we can uh, they give the same values for everything. Then can we use AAS complex problem? Yes. I was about to tell this at the end of the chapter. All the properties are connected. Okay, that is what. See, remember the steer arm one. The steer arm one will help you to connect all the criteria. Do not memorize everything and then confuse yourself. Okay, whichever criteria you are comfortable with, try to prove that every problem. Try to prove in every problem that it is congruent because of that criteria only. Whichever you are strong with. Okay, for that only suggestion is remember this theorem. Okay. But now, for example, if I had seen first some, I can prove it by ABC. I can. You can. You can be. So since you people know the congruency rules already. Can I tell this? Can I ask you this question? You know what is SSS criteria, right? Yes. So all the sides should be equal. So what does theorem one tell us? The angles opposite to two equal angles are equal sides. Sir. Dada, sorry. The angles opposite to two equal sides of a triangle are equal. equal. So if this is x and this is x, can I say AB is equal to AC? Can I say AB is equal to AC? Yes, so when I say AB is equal to AC, now I can say instead of me saying using SAS criteria, I could have told that side, side, and side. I could have used SSS criteria also to prove the same thing. That's what we proved it. No, because theorem one, what does it say? They have given the angle. Yeah. Huh? The sides opposite to equal angles are equal. So the, see, my diagram is looking like that, but actually, if you see the right diagram, is you will have an isosceles triangle. Only then this kind of a scenario is possible. This is five. This is five. This is there. This angle and this angle can be equal. Logically, if there is if there is a line, ra. What is what are lines and angles we choose? If there is a line that you draw it like this, if this is x and this is x, what should be the value of x? So, what kind of a triangle is it supposed to be? It should be an isosceles triangle. No, no, no other option. Are you able to understand? So, you can still prove it using this logic also. You ask no ASS criteria. Is that what? AAS. AAS. That is that what you wanted to prove? So, this angle is there. This angle is there. So, can I say these two angles are also same? Yeah, I was. Because this side is there. This side is common to both. So, theorem one is there. No, the converse of it. What does it state? Yeah. The the included angle opposite to equal sides are equal. So this angle is y. This angle is also y. So A A S. Or which A A S, whichever you. Want. You're able to understand all the identities are connected. Okay. So second one. Can I solve this triangle? Sir, Daiva, me, the 90, la. That is 90, sir. I solve this triangle. Can have a solution. That time you draw, draw the perpendicular, brother. Okay, sir. So now we have a diagram, super diagram. What if we don't have a diagram? That time, how can we solve it? That's that time you make need to construct it. Yeah, we need to construct it. So, so if at all this kind of a scenario happens, that is possible only with the isosceles triangle. Okay, we will see. Yeah, that's right. RHS sometimes it fails, but you can connect it to the other part. Like you can connect RHS to SSS or SAS. Okay. So let's read out in the figure point O. 
is the midpoint of AB and CD. Okay. Prove that AC is equal to BD. So we need to prove that AC is equal to BD and AC is parallel to BD. So how do we do that? AC is equal to BD. So you need to prove that to prove AC is equal to BD. Is that what they asked? Yes. I also need to prove AC is parallel. To prove that. Prove that is question. To prove is what we are trying to say. This angle and this angle are same. Vertically opposite. And we have CS. And they have, they have already told that this side AO and BO are of equal length. Similarly, CO and DO are of equal length. So, two sides and an included angle. So, which two triangles are congruent? Triangle? Triangle AOC is congruent to triangle. BOD because they are given like the triangles as they have to change the don't, did you understand? Don't write it as DOB, not date of birth. DOD, what? Birth of date. Hmm, birth of date. Okay. Did you understand why I changed it? Yes, sir. Because the corresponding side should be AO and BO. Okay. And the sir, common sir. angle, I wrote it at the center. Oh, by CPCT, we have uh, AC. Awesome. Okay. Favorite trick is CPCT. Put it everywhere. Yes. CPCT and N's road. These two things you will do it now, whether you know or not. They give like five subdivisions. One subdivision, one subdivision, they say prove it. All the four subdivisions, we just put CPCT and write that. Find the congruent CPCT. So, if you prove that it is congruent, you can, you're done with it. No? So, with CPCT, what you can say? AC and BD are of equal length. Then? Hmm, how will you prove? Which one or what? Alternate interior angles. This one is Y. This one y. will be Y. But you need to have a you need to have a transversal. No? How do you know that this is a transversal? So I will have the DC as a DC. If you are able to prove that this is Y and this is Y, then you can say that they both are parallel. Will they give you a transversal? No, not A, B, that DC as transversal. First of all, where are the parallel lines? That's what we need to prove, no? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh. So can we draw an imaginary line? That is where I told you, remember this theorem one. Theorem one. So, so, what does theorem one state? The angles opposite to equal sides are equal. So, if this side... So, listen. The angle opposite to AO, if I call it as Y, what will the angle opposite to BO be? That will also be Y. Similarly, if I call the angle opposite to OC as Z, the angle opposite to uh, angle opposite to DO will also be Z. So when can this happen? This is Z and this is Z. This is Y and this is Y. They behave like alternate interior angles. It is possible only when those two lines are parallel to each other, not equal. They are parallel. So AC is equal to BD is a different story. That is in terms of length. But in terms of the angle between them, we proved it by using theorem 1 only. Okay. So, you can use the theorem 1 everywhere. Whenever you get stuck, always relate the side to the angle. Your job is done. Okay. So, AC is parallel to BD. Did you get the logic or not? Yes, sir. Yes. Shall I proceed? So... The second congruency rule that is there in this book is ASA rule. What is it? Angle side angle means two angles and one included side. Right. So what is the other congruency? So next one is AAS. I'm just going in the order of your book. AS is two angles and two angles and the third side is not included in. Fourth one is RSS. Fourth one is RSS. Give SSS. 
So SSS means all the three sides should be equal. Fifth one. Sir, what is RHS? Right, right angle hypotenuse side. Right angle hypotenuse side. Yes. Yeah. So that's what happens even two triangles. It does. It it is not necessary. It need to be equilateral triangle always. Yes, sir. That's equilateral. Side. So it should be congruent, not equilateral. Hey, three sides of not the same triangle, right? Three sides of the corresponding triangles. They can be two scalene triangles also. See, for example, this is ABC. Understood? Huh? PQR. This is four, five, and this is six. For example, this is four, five, six. Is it an equilateral triangle? No, but it's not. But they are. So they are congruent using the SSS. They can equilateral triangle is one such scenario. It is only a possibility. Okay. RHS, you have a different. You have a right angle triangle. Name itself is suggesting. So R H S means what does it state? Right angle, right angle, hypotenuse. That's what I, you can prove it using anything. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll do and show. Literally, I'll not even overthink. I'll try to apply the theorem and close everything. Yeah. Yes, that's what. No, your job is only to prove it. This one alone, it is a new topic for you. Write it down. Inequalities of triangle. You know this, sir? Huh? Yeah. You think you know, you know or I, not? I think they cancel. That's fine. So inequalities of triangle. So first one, angle opposite to. Longer side of a triangle is larger. Is that right? Angle opposite to the longer side of a triangle is larger. See, it's very simple. Oh, okay. yeah, this yeah. is one line. Okay. This is another line. You have an angle. Let's call it as X. So opposite to it, you are able to draw. At the third side. You are enclosing the third side. Now, what if I rotated AC in the anti-clockwise direction? So, if I rotated AC in the anti-clockwise direction, what would have happened? AB is fixed. AC is also still having the same length. But what happened here? The angle has increased. When the angle has increased, the endpoints, the endpoints between the other two vertices will also. Increase means you need to draw a bigger line to close the triangle. That is what they mean here. Sir, so, if this is the triangle, if I turn the anti-clockwise. If you turn it, logic is still the same. Sir, but they, but they, they meant that angle opposite of larger side of angle. That means opposite of AC is angle B. Angle B is larger. That's what they said. That's what they said. Because it's proportional sentence. It's a different sentence. Oh dear. Okay. But you understood, no? Yeah, I understood. Oh. So, side opposite to... That's what this thing... No? Side opposite to the larger angle of a triangle is... Oh. So it is just a reversal. Side opposite to larger angle of a triangle is larger. Longer. Sorry, longer. So if you take a right angle triangle, for example, okay, what is the definition of hypotenuse? Longer side of the right angle. So that is one way, or you can say the side which is opposite to 90 degrees. So if you take a right angle triangle, what is the highest angle that you can always have? It is 90 because the other two angles will only be acute. Right. So 45. Okay. Let me take 40 and 60 for instance. Okay. Then this is definitely going to be the longer side. Let's record it as. Okay. 50. 
Is it okay? So hypotenuse. Now connect these two points to this triangle and see. Angle opposite to the longer side of a triangle is larger. So 90 degrees larger. Okay. Similarly, side opposite to the ang uh, larger angle is longer. Is that clear? And the next one is the third property is sum of any two sides of a triangle. Write it down. Sum of any two sides of a triangle is always greater than the third side. This we studied in the uh, last lines and angles. Sorry. Lines and angles, why would a triangle? In lines and angles, you only... The two sides uh, the two sides is equal to the opposite side. Yes, sir. How can sum of two sides be equal to the opposite side? Not... Yes. Sir. Sum of two sides of a triangle is always greater than the third side. That is what the rule is. You want, you can try and see. You add and see, you will always get it right. Can it be equal? Yes, sir. Can it be when equal? <laughs> you want, you take, tell me a number which works. Like, what like by nine? Like, angle, yeah. right? Yeah. That's the sum of the sides. Yeah. It's like, what is it? What is it? It's so simple. 45, 45, 90. First of all, we don't even know whether they'll get enclosed. They'll be like open structure, if you refer. No, I learned the number you have to see. Try to sit and do a research and then tell What if square, like Pythagoras theorem, one side is equal to two sum of two sides, they are squared in the square. They cannot be because they are the sum of the squares, not sum of the whole square. Okay. Similarly, here you talk, spoke about the sum of two sides. Now, what about the difference of two sides? Difference? Yes. Difference of any two sides of a triangle will be is always less than third side. Okay. There is one problem based on this inequality. So make a note. Okay. Shall we proceed? So this is the theoretical part. We only need to solve problems. So look at the ninth one. Triangle ABC and triangle PBC are isosceles. Okay. Isotriangles on the same base BC. Okay. They are on the same base BC. So first we'll try to draw for the sentence. So there is a base BC and there is a point A which forms an isosceles triangle. So on the same base BC means then I can have two possibilities. Either this could have been A or B if this point was A, then inside point should have been P or A. So depending on the order. If the outside point was A, inner point would have been P. If the outside point was P, the inner point would have been A. Or else you could have had a triangle like this also. These two triangles. This also could have been possible. So with the first sentence, you can conclude nothing. You cannot solve the case. So you need some more hints. Is it clear? So what are the second parts stating? You read. So what are the second parts stating? Ninth one, ninth. Ah. If there are two vertices that are on the same hmm. base BC and vertices A and P are on the same side of BC. Are you able to understand? So are on the same side or else what would have happened? Even the second diagram that I drew would have been possible. Okay, they are on the same side, but which one is at the top? Is A at the top or P at the top? A and P are joined so that triangle ABC is congruent, a, B, P. Is congruent to triangle ACP. Is congruent to triangle ACP. That is first part of the question. Yeah. Second part is AP bisects angle A of triangle ABC. 
by six angle A of triangle ABC. Ah, next two, right? Okay. So here they didn't mention anything about point P. They told that A and P are joined. Okay. A and when A and P are joined, what is happening? That's it. A and P are joined. So if I take this point to be P. Now, how do I proceed? What are we supposed to do? You need to prove that triangle ABP and triangle ACP are similar. Sorry, congruent. But AB, they said that they're isosceles, so AB and AC are same. Are so AB and AC are of same length. Yeah, again, Similarly, BP and, PC. BP and PC are of same length. And AB is common. AB is common. AP is? Okay. So using SSS criteria, you can say that these two triangles are congruent. Is it clear? Is it clear or not? Yes, sir. You're clear? No. See, when it is an isosceles triangle, when you take an isosceles triangle, if this angle is theta, this angle will also be theta. You know this fact, right? Yes, sir. So if this is ABC, then A, B and A, C will be the same. You know this, right? So using that logic, we told A, B, C, they told A, B, C is an isosceles triangle. So A, B will be equal to A, C. So one line and one line. Similarly, they told triangle P, B, C is isosceles. So P, B and P, C will be of the same length. And what is common among both? A, B. So, which two triangles are you considering? ABP and ACP. You proceed with the next one. Next one is the sense, the second part of the question. Oh, then it's fine. Not needed. That BC is given only for you to draw the diagram. Because they use the word common base BC, no, or else you will not know which is a common base. So BC has nothing to do with you. Now, are you clear? So, with what criteria did we prove that these two triangles are congruent? We use SSS criteria. Suppose you don't get this idea, then what will you do? You can go with any other logic. See, for example, this angle is X, this angle will also be X. If all the sides are not included, you definitely need. Listen, listen, listen to the logic. If all the sides, you don't know, you have no information related to all the sides, then you need to definitely include at least one angle. Is that right? That's what other congruencies are telling you. Right? So if this angle is alpha, then how much will this angle be? Same. See, this total angle is alpha, out of which X is gone. Concentrate. Whole angle is alpha. This is x. Then how much is the remaining angle? Alpha minus x. Alpha minus x. What will be the? So here also, I took this whole angle to be alpha. This is x. So side angle side. You can say using SAS criteria also they are same. It's up to you. Are you able to understand? So, AP by 6, angle A. CPCT, you can say that the corresponding angles are going to be, actually here the corresponding sides are equal. Similarly, corresponding angles will also be equal. Since the triangles are similar, congruent, this angle and this angle will be the same. If this is beta, this is beta. Is there anyone who is having any doubt? No, sir. no right? So, should we do the 10th one? Yeah. Figure B is a point equidistant from the lines L and M. Wait, this is what I want to explain. Listen, even before we proceed, right? When you see the word distance from point to a line, when you say distance from a point to a line, it is always 
perpendicular distance. This is the first thing you need to know even before you draw the diagram. You know this fact? Okay. So when you say, so out among all the distances from a point to a line, which is the shortest distance? You have a line and you have a point. From a point, you're, draw, you're finding the distance to the line. Okay, when I say distance to the line, line, ha it, is, it is a perpendicular distance, which is the shortest distance. So whenever they say distance from a point to a line, they always refer to which distance? Perpendicular distance. They will not mention it as perpendicular distance always. Okay, so if you see in figure, they have given the diagram actually. So what are the and another straight line, right? Yeah. And there is a horizontal line. What are the names of the lines? N. This is L. That's L. L. N. This is L, M, and N. Okay. The concurrent point is A. A. So all the lines are meeting at point A. And where is P? P is concurrent. Means wherever the common point for all the lines. Correct, huh? or this is this is B, this is C. Huh? Check. B is on uh, L. I am uh, what? B is on L. I wrote it because uh, B and C. Obviously, perpendicular distance. It is right angle. Ah. They are equidistant. So this line and this length are equal. Are equal, equidistant, right? Now what are we supposed to do? Sir, show that line and uh, along AP bisect the angle L between L and L. Can you prove it? Yes, sir. How will you do? So, if you are able to prove that these two triangles are congruent, your job is done. Then you can say that the angles are equal. Yes. So, how will you prove that they are congruent? That's it. You have RSS. Your wish. Okay. See, one side and other side are equal. So this is 90 degrees, this is 90, and AP is common. So that is ASA, so ASA, so. Which one is ASA? We can do it the ASA also, so AP has a common line. Mm -hmm. So ASS, ASS is common, angle side side. But that's not there actually, angle angle side work. That's not there. Yeah. It's not side. Uh, you can prove it using SSS criteria, right? Yes. You can prove it as. AP is common. See, AP is common. AP is common. BP is equal to CP. Then what did they mention? They didn't say AC is equal to AB. You can't prove it. No? You can't prove. So we'll go only with RHS. You have to go with RHS. I put ASC is common. They didn't give the angles. Yes, sir. Both are 90 degrees. Both are 90 degrees. ASC. Both angles are equal. ASC. You don't know anything about this angle. I'll bring it ASC. Free the. Okay. So, because we are asked to prove that this is an angular bisector. Are you guys able to understand? So, using RSS criteria, you can say that these two triangles are congruent. Shall we proceed? Okay. BB is equal to CB because they are equal distance. AP is equal to CB and the right angle is then our right So, we will proceed. So, solve the level, go to level one problems. In a triangle ABC, AB is equal to 5 centimeters. In a triangle ABC, AB is equal to 5 centimeters. Okay. AC is equal to 5 centimeters. Oh, AC is also 5. Angle A is 50 degree. Angle A is 50 degree. Angle B 
simplest problem huh? x and x it's an isosceles triangle so 2x plus 50 is equal to 180 so 2x will be equal to 130 x will be equal to why are you proving one, tri one triangle the y side angle side you're not proving the congruence you're finding the angle angle is 65 degrees here Second one. If two sides of a triangle are unequal, then opposite angle of a larger side is. This is the statement. If two sides of a triangle are unequal, okay, if they are unequal, it will either form an equilateral or an isosceles triangle. So it's a scalene triangle. So for a scalene triangle, what are they trying to say? The opposite angle of a larger side. Opposite angle of larger larger. side is always larger. larger. That's. Is greater. So option B, A, B. Go and see the inequalities of triangles. Second rule. Inequalities of triangles was on the left hand side. Which question are you seeing? Page number one forty two is what everyone is seeing, right? Ah. Uh, Where is the inequality? Go to page one thirty. In page one thirty, what is the first point? Uh, what is the second question? No, not second point. Read the, read the, read the, read that one forty two. What is this? Got it? Third one. Given figure, PQ is equal to QR. I need the shape first of all. Which one? The P. PQ is equal to QR. PQR. Okay. PQ is equal to QR. Uh. Okay. Angle QPR forty eight degree. Angle P. Angle QPR is forty eight degree. Ah. Uh. Angle R is equal to angle SRP. Just draw the triangle. Yeah. Ah. Uh. That's S. Ah, uh, angle, angle S. Sir, P is equal to AD. Okay. Then angle PQR. Angle PQR is how much? So this angle is how much? Do we need to even solve this? So what did they say? So since they told. Eighteen plus eighteen. That's not an angular basis. They didn't tell you. They didn't tell you what that line R is. You have to concentrate on one thing. P, Q, and Q R are same. So if this is forty-eight degrees, then how much is this total angle? That is also forty-eight. So out of forty-eight, eighteen is gone. Means how much is this angle? Forty-eight minus eighteen. How much is that? Thirty. So if this is thirty. Four forty-eight, eighteen. Then how much is this angle? Sir, no, sir. We have to find this one, sir. Forty-eight. Leave me. Ask the angle, sir. This angle, P. Sixty. One eighty minus seven. One eighty minus sixty. Hmm. How much is it? One eighty. One forty. One forty. One forty. Now, or else I I could have done this thing also. If I take this as x, for example. Exterior angle is equal to sum of opposite interior angles. Forty-eight plus eighteen. That would have been sixty-four. So if this is sixty-four and this is thirty, then how much will this angle be? One eighty minus ninety-four. It will be six. Right. Seventeen minus nine. Seventeen minus nine. There is no six, sir. No, sir. We have to find this one. We already found it, sir. Oh, that's what they're asking. Yeah, that's six. Huh? Sorry, no. I found all that. It's okay. It's better. Let it be like a bonus. I I have to leave the no time. Okay. So you guys sit and work. I think we are meeting again on Friday, no?
Okay. 